What is up guys and welcome to a new series where I use money making guides from the OSRS wiki. If you guys enjoy this idea, I'll definitely make more and try to run through every single one of these on the list, no matter how ridiculous they might be. I'll be trying and testing out these money makers to see how accurate they are so you don't have to. Let's get into the video. How's it going guys? Today we have a sort of different kind of video. Today we'll be using a um, suggestion that I've been getting a lot in a lot of my older videos and in my last video and it's basically to do a free to play money maker such as making jewelry so I thought I'd go ahead and do that. The reason why I haven't done this in the past is because I couldn't find those on the actual OSR's wiki money making guides and that's what the series was all about testing the guides that are on there. But I'd figured we'd do it anyways because it is a money maker and people do do it and yes I did say doo doo but uh yeah so I thought I'd go ahead and do it anyways just to show off what kind of money you can make in free to play by making jewelry. And just because it's not on the OSR's wiki money making guides doesn't mean that it might get added to it later so who knows maybe one day it'll be on there and this video will be more relevant. But again I decided to go ahead and make this because even while I was searching through the prices of how much you could make doing the jewelry methods, the wiki did show how much profit you'd be making based on the cost of supplies. So in a way, they do kind of have a money maker on there, but it's just not in the money making guide form, I guess, because it's either not that profitable or maybe because it's just very simple. I'm not too sure, but uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do this. They do have enchanting jewelry as a money maker, so I might do that one day, but for now we'll just be making the jewelry. So here I was checking the prices of uh, sapphire necklaces, emerald necklaces, and then I also checked ruby and diamond, and the best one out of the four was the emerald. That one had the best margin at the time, so I decided to make those for the video. And here I am just buying the supplies that I would need. I wasn't sure how much I could make in an hour, so I just decided to get 2,000 of each. And these are the prices that we ended up buying the materials for. And I blurred out everything around it because I have some super secret, top secret merching items in there that, you know, maybe I'll go over in a different video, but not this one. And after paying for all the items, it looks like I spent just over one mil for the emeralds and the gold bars, which we're not going to use all of them, but you know, it's better to have more. That way I can just do the full hour without any interruptions. Now onto the setup of the video, I'll be putting it in this tab that I use for all my money making videos. As you can see it has that gold helmet, the best helmet in the game. I am filling up the bank with bank fillers just to make my life easier while I'm doing this method. I'm going to move the golds and emeralds on top of each other. And I will set the withdraw option to 13. Normally you could do 14 by withdrawing 14 of each, but since you have the mold in your inventory that's one less that you can carry. So. You'll just be bringing 13 of each, 13 emeralds, 13 gold bars, and then you'll make your way to the furnace. We are using the Edgeville furnace again because that's the one with no requirements. And then we just hit all and we can click on the necklace and it will make all of the emerald necklaces. The downtime compared to cannonballs is much less. It's around, I'd say around 30 seconds while the cannonballs was like over two and a half minutes, but it's still a nice AFK money maker and you get some nice crafting experience in the process. Now if you don't have members this would actually be a pretty good alternative to making cannonballs. Um, they're both basically the same thing, you're running to and from the bank and furnace in Edgeville and you're just smithing. The cannonballs does have you know a lot more AFK time but the profits are still pretty much the same and I think you make a lot more crafting XP gains than you would uh, smithing cannonballs. Cannonballs you're making smithing gains. And it's not very much smithing XP because of how long it takes to actually make the cannonballs. I gotta say, there was also something very nostalgic about making these emerald necklaces. I don't have an Iron Man, so I've really never had a use for making these necklaces myself. But back in the day, I do remember doing this for money um, a very long time ago, back before I even had members. And I don't know, it's just, it takes me back to, uh, takes me back to Christmas time, just playing RuneScape as a kid and it was just good times, good times. Well, I mean, good times when I wasn't getting scammed for my, uh, for my gems. I remember spending so much time in Alcarid at the gem shop buying all the uncut sapphires whenever they became available. And because I didn't have the crafting level, I would go ahead and ask someone else to cut it for me because there was a very popular scam back in the day. Uh, people would offer their 
free gem cutting services. You would give them their gem and they'd cut it for you. You know, you'd get a brand new cut gem because it was worth more back then. And they would get some crafting XP. But because of the scam, I lost a lot of sapphires that way. And it was pretty devastating to me as a kid. But, you know, that's just, just the way it goes. Changing topics really quick, I just want to say that I have been playing Twisted League still. Um, I'm actually doing some more uh, things that involve concentration instead of just AFKing. Like, I went ahead and grinded out 77 runecrafting at the Arceus Library, which was uh, not the most fun thing to do, but with the Ruin Light plugin, it greatly helps. For those of you, if there are any of you that are doing that Arceus Library thing without the Ruin Light plugin, I. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing, and I applaud you if you're able to get decent XP rates doing that, but without the Ruin Light plugin, that would be a nightmare. At least for me, it would. Besides 77 Ruin Crafting, I've also been doing some other stuff, doing some quests, getting some favor, because I, for some reason, did not get favor for a lot of the houses. I also went back to Winter Todd to get 50 million fire making XP. And I will more than likely get 100 mil just because you get 500 points for reaching each of those milestones. And with the relics that I chose, I am getting around 6 million fire making XP an hour, so it flies by pretty, uh, pretty nicely. Uh, 200 mil might be too much. I don't know if I want to dedicate another 100 mil after I've already done 100 just for an extra 500 points. I might. We'll see how it goes. Um, I've been doing Tide Farm. I've completed. Pretty much everything that there is to do uh, XP wise, I, I reached a level that allows me to boost into the farming guild to get my points. The only thing I'm missing from Tithe Farm in terms of rewards is, I believe, the legs, the, uh, the, the legs of the farmer's outfit. Uh, I might buy the can that they sell and the seed box, but other than that I'm pretty good. With all of those tasks that I've been completing, I think I stopped around 8,500 points. So I still think I'm like slightly behind the amount of points you need for Ruin Cup, which is what I'm currently going for. So I'll definitely keep pushing till I get that because that is my main goal to finish the Twisted League with the Ruin Cup. So hopefully we can get that and towards the end of the league, I'll probably make a video showing off the bank and showing off all the points and skills that I got and just stuff like that. It'll be a nice little conclusion for the uh, season. And with that being said, we are approaching the end of this one hour. Um, I did ramble on a bit, you know, about other stuff, but it's just because this moneymaker is very straightforward. There's really not too many things you need to know about it. It's just, you know, getting the 13 emeralds, 13 gold bars, and smithing them. But we are done, and it seems that we finished with around 1,310 of these emerald necklaces. I'm just going to go ahead and put them in for the market price. And as you can see, they will take a while to sell. They did have a higher actively traded price, but for some reason I felt like that, I don't know, I, f I felt like they wouldn't sell, so I decided to leave them in there for market price. And here I actually logged into this and I was very surprised. This is probably the most interesting login screen that I've seen in <laughs> my entire time of playing RuneScape, so I decided to log out and log in again just to show you guys what I saw when I logged in. And uh, yeah, some kind of party going on there. But the emerald necklaces did end up selling for 681 coins each, and it looks like we got around 892,000 GP from one hour of making emerald necklaces. And with the necklaces finally being sold, we can now go ahead and go to the next screen and calculate how much total profit we actually made from this one hour. But before we do that, we do have to get in on this party. I do believe that I have a... I don't even remember what it's called. What is it? Oh, the Ale of the Gods, yeah. So, yeah, now we can be one of them. But with all that being said and done, let's get into the actual profit calculations. So if we subtract the total amount of money that we spent on supplies, which was 736,220 GP, from the total amount of money that we made, which was 892,110 GP, we get a grand total profit of 155,890 GP from one hour of making emerald necklaces. Now normally I would throw up the OSRS wiki uh, prediction of how much money you would make for the one hour, but like I said in the beginning of the video, there was no OSRS wiki guide for this. So 
Uh, yeah, we'll be skipping that step. But I can show you how much crafting XP we got. We did get 78,600 crafting XP, which is actually quite a lot. So compared to cannonballs, this actually did pretty darn well in terms of money making and XP. I just want to say thanks for checking out the video, guys. It means the world to me. And if you enjoyed it, please consider giving it a thumbs up and possibly a subscription. It would be greatly appreciated. And as always, I will catch you guys in the next video.